Welcome to Nerd Alert, everyone. I am joined today by someone I respect for her talent and also her intelligence. This is our return guest, Christina <laughs> Ochoa. Christina is uh, one of the stars of Matador from Robert Rodriguez on the El Rey Network. She's also one of the sirens and is a science ed educator, co-host of the Intel Science Fair. Lot of lot of science pedigree in there <laughs> with the acting pedigree. Yes, it's a twofer. I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming to come back. I'm happy to have you, and I'm happy to have your insight on all these stories, which lean heavily science uh, because of your influence, which is great. <laughs> See, audience, we got someone. <laughs> uh, our first story comes from. Mars. It is the Maven and Mangalyon were able to successfully take pictures of, well, uh, clearly above Mars. Uh, the first of which we're going to show you uh, pictures from the Maven. We have, these are false colorized, by the way. Uh, the blue is the hydrogen, or the light rather, reflected in a hydrogen huge cloud thousands of kilometers above Mars' surface. Green shows the UV from the sun, but uh, this was reflected off of the oxygen in a smaller cloud closer to the surface held in by gravity. The red one is reflected sunlight. And finally, we have a composite. So like you were saying, um, these are images captured from the spectrometer on the uh, MAVEN. And then we also have the Mars Orbiter mission from India, which affectionately we call MOM. Mom. And it shows the hydrogen and it shows the oxygen, which because it's heavier, it is uh, retained in the atmosphere by gravity. And then we have the surface of the planet and that right kind of red spot at the bottom is uh, the polar ice on the red image. Oh, I see. And uh, this is, I mean, this is a huge accomplishment. Half of the missions that we send to Mars, these are orbiters, so they're not going to go onto the surface, but uh, half of the missions that we send to Mars fail. Yes. So this is suddenly putting uh, India as well in this interplanetary mission scope. Yes. It's Well, actually, uh, Mongol Yan was able to take I hope I pronounced it right, by the way. I don't know if I have. We're both going to um, wing it on that. It was able to take closer, uh, even closer pictures, I believe 7,300 kilometers from the surface. And we can see the craters. Do we have that picture? There we go. Yes. And they tweeted out cheekily saying, oh, there's a nice view right here. <laughs> Very How cute, Mom. Is it that they do it with uh, one-tenth of the budget yes. that we've done it with? So. Yeah, that's really good. It was what, it was seventy four million yeah. versus seven hundred million. Which and you is may what the remember the um, the graphics that showed that uh, gravity cost one hundred million to make a movie, and then we were able <laughs> yes. to well, not us, but India is able to send an orbiter over for far less than that, and <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's really incredible. They they used a, a different. Not a different, but their their method of doing this involved three phases: a geocentric phase of uh, sending the orbiter around the Earth to essentially pick up speed. Uh, the second is the heliocentric phase, which is tangentially uh, departing Earth orbit and then tangentially entering uh, the Mars orbit via a half ellipse around the Sun, and then the Martian phase of looping around the red planet. And talk about a space race. I mean, uh, the MOM was uh, launched three days prior to the MAVEN and was expected to land, uh, you know, kind of insert orbit three days prior to MAVEN, but um, maneuvering, you know, kind of uh, put them behind a little bit. So yeah. it's it's very exciting. And, and I think it was remarkably correct, their maneuvering. I, th I think they had an opportunity to correct course, but they didn't even need it because yes. it was so close to what they had already planned. Yes. So that's pretty darn good. <laughs> uh, some people have criticized uh, India's uh, launching of a Mars orbiter mm -hmm. uh, due to economic issues in the country, but it's a, it's it a could, country that's very impoverished and it has 1.2 billion people. They don't have proper toilet facilities, electricity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sanitary conditions, and they're investing a really large amount of money on space exploration, but it could potentially open the door to investors yeah. um, and it could elevate the country. And, and there's a big sense of pride coming now from India for this accomplishment that I think will you probably know, I help. I think Americans are somewhat familiar with that sense of pride of being able to do this fantastic feat of science and engineering. <laughs> yes. um, but you know, it's also possible that with their ability to launch orbiters or launch into space that you could, there is derived revenue from this. We've spoken before about how um, 
the NASA had been using uh, Russia's Soyuz to probably mispronounce that too, I'm sorry, uh, to launch our astronauts into space and of course with a heavy payment going to Russia for that service. So it's not, I couldn't tell you the economics clearly, but it's not necessarily a complete loss for India to say the least. And not to mention, you know, hopefully the amount of information that we're going to gain. I mean, both of these orbiters are studying the upper atmosphere of Mars and the weather conditions, and we're kind of trying to figure out what the uh, dispersion rate for the atmosphere is. Like, how fast did these gases evaporate from the atmosphere so that we can then kind of, you know, uh, find out at what rate it has been? Where's right. the, where did the water go? Where did this atmosphere go in Mars? Well, how did this planet transition from being a wet planet to being so cold and dry is what we're trying to learn, which has many applications for us. Um, so that's really, I, I feel really positively about this as a whole. As I, I think it's a wonderful accomplishment on both ends. Yeah. So. <laughs> Very great. We're going to be learning more from Maven and the MOM mission, which I'm calling it now because I have problems uh, pronouncing it. But I think it's still a great feat. Let us know what you think below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe.